Hello everyone, my name is Amra Sir and I'm a hospitality student from University of Tara Malaysia. My ID number is 268221 and I'm from semester 4. Hello guys, before I go through to this video, let me introduce myself first. My name is Normal Ben Ismail and my metric number is 266826. Currently, I'm study in Bachelor of Hospitality Management in semester 5. So, uh, in today's video, me and Ahmad are going to present about handling complaints from Unit 4. So, uh, what is complaints? Complaints is generally uh, the feel of unsatisfaction of customers towards a company's product or service. As of that, a company should be very, uh, very professional in handling uh, those complaints or, or unsatisfaction of guests. No matter what industry we work in, we will certainly need to deal with uh, difficult customers at some point. Whether the issue was uh, is beyond beyond our control or a direct response to a mistake in business, we may encounter the good, the bad, and the ugly. Sometimes it is very difficult to know how to handle difficult customers, but with the correct tips and uh, with the right way, we certainly can handle uh, those situations with ease. As of that, in today's video. Me and Ahmad are going to present about 11 types of difficult customers and how to handle them. Me myself will present you the 7 types of uh, difficult customers and how to handle them. So I hope you all will get some information from our video. Thank you. So the first customer that I am going to explain is Indecisive Easy. So in Desi Easy is a girl, she's a girl who can't seem to uh, make a proper decision on her own despite so many questions she asks. For an example, when there's uh, object A and object B in front of her, she can't seem to uh, choose which object she wants to purchase. purchase. So as of that, uh, how, how can we help her? So, the first step that we can do is acknowledge her uh, indecision. So um, by this way, we need to communicate properly uh, what what is a uh, basic needs before uh, before buying uh, those products, those uh, objects. Secondly, we we cannot be very pushy. So we need to let her phone to buy those products. We cannot push her. To buy either object A or object B. Thirdly, we need to offer facts and the best solution solution for our needs. By this way, we can um, uh, communicate what the um, the facts hidden in, in object A and object B, which is uh, uh, related to the uh, needs, so that she can choose uh, the best option to buy either object A or object B. So the second customer that I'm going to explain is Noe or Kevin. Noe or Kevin is a boy who seems to know everything about our product and is very highly critical towards our recommendations. So the best thing that we can do to handle this kind of customers is the first step that we can do is uh, we need to be very patient and attentive. What I mean by be very patient and attentive is this kind of customers uh, is always very angry and they think that they know everything about our product. As of that, we should we should be very patient and communicate well about our product and service to the customers. Second, we need to use clarifying statements uh, by by introducing new ideas uh, for our products to show the customers that the products got uh, so many of uh, ideas uh, than he thought. So it will be a very good way to acknowledge the customer about, uh, about the good thing of our product. So the third 
certain customer that I'm going to present is ag- aggressive MB guy. Aggressive MB guy is a girl, uh, a customer who thinks that her needs uh, should be prioritized over others. She will raise her voice and get angry very quickly. So, to handle this kind of customers, first, we need to stay calm and never argue with them. Um, perhaps, we should make them believe that we understand their point of view and we, sh- uh, we should take an alternatives and offer the best kind of solutions so that they will get satis- uh, a very good satisfaction on it. So the fourth customer is Impulsive E1. Impulsive E1 is a customer, uh, a boy who is very motivated to buy, but he may overlook certain details and have trouble to concentrate. So to face this kind of customers, first we need to be very brief but specific to help them to buy uh, those products. Uh, secondly, once we know what, uh, what they want, once we determine what they want, we should act uh, quickly before they change their mind. And lastly, we need to make their purchase very easy. So the fifth customer is Cautious Charlie. Cautious Charlie is a customer who is always worried to make the right decisions and always ask a lot of questions. So to face this kind of customers, first we don't over over explain the kind of products they want. Perhaps we also can show some interest on their needs. Thirdly, we can give simplified and factual answers to them by by offering real solution to what they want. So the sixth customer I'm going to explain is Talk Active Temi. Talk Active Temi is a very friendly customer. Although she is very friendly, she tends to repeat herself and may be just looking for human interaction. So the best thing that we can do to handle this kind of customers is uh, first we need to listen carefully for what they want to say. Second, we need to ask close questions for a yes or no answer. Perhaps we also can narrow down for what they want to say. So the seventh customer that I'm going to explain is complaining chat. Complaining chat is a customer who amplifies the problem. If they even want to begin with, and it's very hard to satisfy. So to to handle this kind of customers, first we need to be very attentive and try to understand their point of view should avoid excuses between them and should ask for a sincere apology. As of that, now I will continue to Ahmad for him to continue with the upcoming products. So I will proceed to example 8 which is no boundary Nikki. In this case Nikki will ignore your schedule or time expect quick answer to her many requests. For Nikki case, we need to respond calmly. We should not be in a hurry to solve Nikki problem. It provides to prevent Nikki from becoming erratic if we are in hurry to answer all the questions posed with a calm state then all the questions that, that play in Nikki mind will be easy for us to answer if we are in a calm situation. In addition, we must be wise in anticipating the question that Nikki wants to ask. Thus, it, gov- it, it gives us the advantage to answer all the questions given to us. So, our job to solve Nikki problem will be easier. Next is the set expectation. As you already know, constant expectations are very much needed in overcoming Nikki problem because it will give us an advantage in solving problem or question at play in Nikki mind. Last but not least is always meet him. That way will be easier to answer all Nikki questions when we face her. 
Next example we can see is best deal with Barbara which is she very concerned about her budget and she will compare price and is often difficult to reason with. How should we help her? So the first thing is ask for a budget range. This way it will be easier for us to know the budget estimate set by Barbara. After knowing the budget that Barbara estimate, so we offer a list option that fit Barbara budget. This will make it easier for Barbara to make choice according to her budget. After that, we highlight the product at the price point. This way, it will be easier for Barbara to find out the price according to the budget fit by Barbara. Next example is uh, demanding Devin, which is he know what he want is entitled and may demand something you can't deliver. Therefore, for the solution, we need to be more communicative. It what it was like it was like asking more questions to Devin at the request he needed. In this way we will be easier to help Devin with his request. Moreover, we must convince him that we understand what he wants. That way we could come if we understand the request made by Devin, after that we must do our our best to meet his expectation. This method will give Devin convinc confidence in us to solve problem that Devin faced. Finally, we must compromise as best we can. With that, it, it will make Devin make the right choice if we show effort in solving his problem. So that is some example in example situation in handling customer complaint. Difficult customer that we perceive to be difficult. How do we turn this difficult customer into potential good customer instead of turning them? So don't worry guys, I will share something technique from Dr. Patricia Patton on how to handling customer complaint. First one is remain calm and professional. It is critical that you remain in control. Don't them intimidate you, but don't return the aggression. Through your action and word, let them know that you how have every attention to provide them a high level of service regardless of their behavior. Second one is let let them vent their emotion emotion if if the customer at their peak emotion which is crying or shouting give them time to get it all out you must however remain calm during this time if they start delivering punch or other physical assault then you must take defensive action and call for help. That one is find the right moment to get your voice in. When you find the customer is lo losing momentum, jump in and say that you understand their concern and that you are here to help. If their emotional outbursts last too long, you can interrupt them. If you must do so, call them by name and repeat their complaint first before offering your help or solution. 
Fourth one is sit them down. Most people are less aggressive if they are sitting down, so invite them to sit. However, if they choose not to sit, you, you should always remain standing to remain in control. Fifth one, be friendly. Although this, although this will probably be tough thing to do, you must remain calm and friendly. When they realize they cannot intimidate you or incur your wrath, they will calm down and adopt your posture post, 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 post as well. Sick one is keep eyes contact. Keeping eyes contact with them is about remaining control. Being confident and calm and thus professional, do that without uh, appearing aggressive, de defensive of, or aggressive. You have to maintain a posture of service throughout. 7. is Do not argue. Do not engage in counter argument. You can stab your opponent assertively but not confrontationally. Do not try to cut the customer down. The idea here is not to make customer feel bad, but quiet the opposite. Opposite. It is listen. Listen to the customer complaint and avoid interrupting. Try not to look or sound impatient. Nine is do not pass judgment. Validate their complaint but not pass judgment. Keep your voice and facial expression neutral at all the time. Ten is maintain service attitude. Regardless of whether the complaint is founded or not, maintain an, uh, an attitude of service. Last but not least is do not rush to agree or apologize. Do not rush to agree or apologize for the allegations. Try and find a resolution first to the problem. If need be, then do further investigation into allegation and make amend where appropriate. Sometimes complaining, complaining, customer only want to be here. And the last one is solve the problem. Instead of taking a defensive defensive stance, move into a problem solving mode. A spe specific question request for handwriting handwritten complain to ensure all the facts are in black and white and get the customer to agree to focus on solving uh, the problem so guys it is so sad we come we came to the end of this video so in previous video there is some example and some technique on how to handling customer complaint and I hope it will help us to do better in our service so I think that all from me and Amarasan for this video I hope you will enjoy watch this video and last of my word is thank you